So I'm going to tell you about my story stepping into crisis. Um, I think all co-ops have various crises at different points of their existence. Some are fresh out of it, some are smack dab in the middle of it. Um, and I think during times of crisis, there's just a huge call for courage in those moments. Um, the particular crisis I stepped into, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it, but um, our co-op was very much threatened with whether it was going to continue existence or not. We were a startup in 2010, and I was the fifth GM in three and a half years. Um, I had been there from the beginning, so I had a good window on some of the problems I was stepping into. Um, but the first thing that I identified, and whether it's courageous or not, I'm not sure, but it was definitely a need, um, was that people really needed to be heard, desperately wanted to be heard. Um, and so what I did, because we're a smaller co-op, was I sat down with every single employee and I just took notes. And what I found was there was a big need for an outlet for all the hurt or disenfranchisement or you know, whatever they were feeling. Um, it was a useful tool for me to identify some toxicity that was going on in the workplace. Um, and a lot of people just really wanted to be a voice for change. They wanted to participate. They hadn't had a meaningful outlet for participation. And so they really just wanted to give me their ideas. So it was some combination of the three of those things that came out of a lot of that time. And what was important was I just listened. I provided a couple probing questions, but I didn't try and fix anything. I didn't tell anyone, hey, you sound toxic. <laughs> um, I just listened, and I wanted that to be the starting point of like, this is going to be meaningful, listening, moving forward together, um, and we're going to make this as transparent as possible. Um, and I don't still do that. Three and a half years later, I don't still <laughs> sit down regularly with everything, every single staff member. But I found that continuing um, a venue for people to speak their voice and speak their truth, especially in a co-op environment, has been uh, throughout time really important. And I still do that. Um, there's a really great uh, video, short video on YouTube called Radical Candor that I encourage you to watch if you haven't, um, if you're looking for some inspiration on courageous leadership. But one of the tools that she talks about is get, having truth to power meetings. And so that's what I do. I sit down with groups of staff members without their managers present, and I just say, let's talk. And I keep it really solutions oriented and not complaining oriented, because that's an important element. Um, but just to continue those conversations and keeping it transparent and keeping the connection to communication really open. Um, the second thing I did right off the bat um, is it was pretty clear after those meetings that there were some issues that needed, some big changes that needed to happen right away. Um, but I didn't want to come in and just kind of turn the whole organization upside down overnight. Um, and so what I started doing is I just introduced some really non-threatening changes. And I introduced them right away, but I made sure they were as non-threatening as possible. I brought in a, you know, a salad bar, like a big salad bar to increase self-serve options in the deli. Um, I moved a bunch of displays around. And I started encouraging everyone to do that as much as possible. I started um, really trying to get everyone to experiment and be OK with experimenting. And while it wasn't very strategic at the time, I was just kind of you know, trying to shake things up and get things moving in the right direction, what that, what's happened over the last three and a half years is I've continued doing that, and I've increased kind of the tenor of the courageous changes that are being made. And it's created a culture where people expect it and where people aren't really stuck in the mud <laughs> and saying, no, this is the way it's always been. I'm not changing. Everyone, our customers, our employees, our board understands that we're in the business of experimenting and figuring out what's best for everyone at the co-op. Um, th th so kind of the big step I made after that was changing our accountability structure in the store. Um, it was hardly present when I walked in. And uh, it was something that I really found the most effective thing to do was to turn that accountability structure up slowly. Um, and uh, the most important element to that was I made it very public knowledge that that was going to happen. And then the other important element to that is, and I would say is an important element in all of the 
changes that I made was rooting it in the cooperative values that that's why we're all there at the end of the day, whether it's the cooperative principles or just cooperative values as a whole. We're not getting more accountability because we're the man and we're just gonna start being mean to you and making you wear a name tag. We're changing these structures because if we want this thing to work, we need to be accountable to each other so that we're not burning each other out by doing every, each other's work all the time. We need to be accountable to our farmers, which was a really core value of a lot of people um, who've been on staff for a while and were on staff at the time. You know, this is about all of us. And if one of us is acting irresponsibly, it has an impact on the larger community. So anytime I could really, and I did with every single change or every single conversation, everything rooted in those co-op values. The other really important thing I did was I got as much help as I possibly could. Um, NCG, CDS, we got our board on policy governance right away. I went to every single training I possibly could. I sent staff to every single training that I possibly could. And if you want to change a culture, it needs investment. It needs training, it needs coaching, it needs cheerleaders, <laughs> whatever, whatever outside forces you can bring lend um, incredible uh, momentum to those changes, to changing that culture. Um, one of the biggest lessons I've learned after three and a half years of this work is to pay attention to the tone with which you use as board members, as managers, as GMs, as staff, um, and how you approach all of this change. What we kind of got into was we were really jazzed and rejuvenated, you know, rejuvenated when we started having success with a couple of these changes. And then over time we started telling the story of, oh, well, pretty soon it's going to get easy. Pretty soon, the changes are going to start to pay off. Pretty soon, we're going to be coasting. And the reality is that never happened. <laughs> we're in a really different environment right now. And it's not easy. And that got us demoralized over time. And our tone changed without us even really recognizing that it changed. All of a sudden, every day we were tired. Or some big drama just happened. Or some employee just was causing trouble. And what we've really been working on lately, is kind of the three and a half year iteration of this courageous leadership, is sometimes changing the tone or changing the culture, culture can be as simple as paying attention to how you talk. <laughs> and coming in every morning and saying, hey, yeah, you know, this is a challenging landscape, but we're excited to be uh, bringing local food to our community. Or we've got a really cool new initiative coming out. Or I just signed up another local farmer who's thrilled to be here today. Whatever it takes, to keep the momentum positive and going and keeping the team together um, has been critical for us. And it's been an ever-changing, ever-evolving process in, in how to tackle these difficult problems, how to stay together doing it, um, and how to stay sustainable doing it, which has been a really important lesson for me lately. Um, and uh, the last bit I want to say, other than um, keeping the tone really positive and, and a really great way to do that is something I learned in CCMI, which is an NCG uh, program that I went to early on that's kind of hit home for me lately, is this idea of getting on the balcony um, and being able to take a step back when things get intense, get on the balcony, get some other perspective on what's going on so that you can realize how to move forward. When things just get so crazy <laughs> that you kind of don't know what to do next. And I just went through this process personally over the last month. Find a way to get a different perspective on it. And you'll be amazed at just walking out of the drama and walking out of the crisis and walking away from the shouters for a second, what kind of perspective you can get on how to really move forward in a positive way. So short story, our co-op's doing pretty great. <laughs> A uh, lot of challenges still ahead, but um, we've come a long way. I'm feeling really good about that. Yay.